Jason, thanks so much for your time. We really appreciate it. Uh, I'm sure you've been busy as hell. The summer has just been like just super busy in general. And you've got a game <laughs> to work on and continue to work on and, and to promote. How has the year been for you? Um, and what's it been like adjusting to this you know, new normal? Oh man, this new normal uh, really changed a lot of the way we approached this game. Originally, Ionia for uh, PC VR was going to be uh, soft launching into location-based entertainment as early as a year and a half ago. Mm. And it was, uh, it was our opportunity to go to cruise ships and a bunch of mom and pop uh, um, uh, arcade spaces across the country. And then we were going to work from there to a consumer version of the game, the one that we have now. Okay. And so COVID hit and we, we obviously had all of those opportunities to just go right out the door. But it didn't discourage us. We we had a great game. We had a lot of a good build up and press uh, uh, at that point. And we reached out to uh, while we were in the process of making the PC VR version ready for uh, Steam and, and consumers. We reached out to Sony. We reached out to Oculus, and ultimately uh, uh, landed the ability to bring our game to the Oculus Quest and the PlayStation VR. So we went back into production. We started porting, learning all the crazy things it, it, it took to take this amazing game and put it into those that console and that headset. Right, uh, mm. and uh, and that's where we are today. Uh, it does not sound like an easy journey at all. I'm sure it's just way <laughs> easier said than done. Um, if you want, you can jump right into the game for us. And, and while while you're doing that, can you just talk about the creation of Ionia's narrative? It's really beautiful, um, not just visually, but just from a narrative standpoint. It reminds me of a lot of the games that I played like in high school and that, you know, have these sort of tones of even like Elder Scrolls. But what was it like putting this narrative together? So this is a, a story that's been created over the past 10 years. Uh, uh, so my background is that I, I'm CEO and a, and a producer for uh, Road to Entertainment. We're a, uh, uh, we're a company that has worked with nonprofits uh, for the past 10 years, utilizing international musicians to create everything from live shows to flash mobs to music videos and documentaries. And it was in 2015, I believe, when we tried the HTC Vive for the first time uh, and we saw the whale go by in the blue and we were just like, oh, this is what we're doing with the rest of our lives. Like all of us were super excited. This was the new entertainment medium we wanted to tell our story in. Um, so what we what we did is, uh, and, and I should give credit to our creative director and co-founder, Amir Saraman. He is uh, 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 someone who brought all of the stories and experiences and all of the uh, all of the differences that we discovered amongst each other, and the similarities that we uh, discovered amongst each other uh, uh, as a group of international musicians, and turn that into story form. And mm -hmm. I'm I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, play a little bit while we talk here. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, uh, what he did is he he took the the music theory right and the and the everything that we learned from each other's cultures, and we turned that into. Uh, um, storyline uh, of gameplay uh, um, uh, characters and creatures uh, right. um, dialogue and ultimately a giant world based around music mythology and the lives of over a thousand international musicians and so that's really the the core and the the the, the beginning of this story and really Ionia and the reason why we call this land Ionia is that the the franchise is rhythm of the universe and the first game and the first land is Ionia because in, in music there are, um, let me make sure I'm facing the microphone, um, in music there are what, what are called modes, modes of music and that's the Ionian, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, Mixolydian, mm. Aeolian, and Locrian scales, uh, or modes rather. And Ionian is the is is our interpretation of the first mode uh, and, and, and so Ionia is this giant lush jungle that is the heart uh, and soul of the entire uh, you, uh, the entire world um, on the supercontinent of Pangaea, which is where our worlds uh, and our, our lands reside, and that's where we start our story is uh, uh, is is in the first mode of music and in the heart of the jungle. Wow, wow! For starters, uh, those <laughs> those terms you were mentioning made this stuff sound like hella Star Trek. I was like, oh, okay, so <laughs> music from Star music from Star Trek, but um, I just think the overall um, just aesthetic 
fits, especially what you were just mentioning with regard to music. So yeah, it's really incredible. Thank you. It's a, uh, it's like, it's a life passion. I mean, I think most people create games because, hey, you know, we, we know that this genre really does well at this target market or, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we had a, this cool idea to make money or, or a great way to do a <laughs> microtransaction uh, for the more uh, pessimistic side of the gaming world. But for us, like we approach this game purely on an artistic standpoint. We, we made this, this game was going to be made one way or another. It actually has different forms. Like you'll see characters and concepts in this game that are part of our live shows, that are a part of our music videos. And, and really the biggest influence uh, this game, the, the experience that we had as a team to make this game was we were hired by the, uh, the Amazon Aid Foundation to travel and go backpacking in the Peruvian Amazon wow. where we filmed the illegal wow. gold mining and deforestation happening there. And it was an incredible journey and it was met with such beauty and incredible nature and the flora and fauna was uh, uh, was mesmerizing to us. But then out of nowhere, we come across this, this uh, vast empty void of, of just land that had been uh, utilized for m gold mining. And what they did is pump, and what they still do to this day, is pump mercury into the sediment. After cutting all the trees down, they, they basically have a way of just oh, uh, wow. uh, through a bunch of sand, okay. which mercury attaches to gold, creating methylmercury. And then they burn away the mercury, uh, leaving gold nuggets. And that mercury gets oh. left in the sediment of the soil where nothing grows back. Mm -hmm. It's even worse than farming where the, it isn't going to be coming back in 40 years it's it's gone it this is mud for the for the next couple hundred years so um wow so the team witnessed that made a music video brought hundreds of musicians some of them the local children uh from uh Porto Malinado, and had them sing a song to help protect the amazon and uh, that really was one of the biggest inspirations for this game is uh this is just a story version of that experience Wow, that's that's incredible. And and what we do here is like instead of you know finding a giant dead mud puddle, we 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 have to help the harpa. And the harpa is this musically inspired moth the size of a bus that is uh, provides energy to the Amazon. And that inspiration also comes from a a, a very famous moth of a very rare moth that we saw in the Amazon. It actually landed on one of our cameras, I believe. And uh, uh, the guides and the people we were with were pretty surprised that one, we were seeing this moth in the day and two, that it even it, it exposed itself to us. So that felt magical to us and really yeah. helped create the, the main reason and the main hope we created in this game. And by the way, I want to show you one of the it's the game is full of lots of little things that you can do that aren't necessarily important to the game, but are just something to help build imagination. So one thing is just mm -hmm. touching this bowl here, right? If uh, if we yeah. touch it, simply just uh, illuminates oh, wow. this sort of secret room that you find. So That's incredible. To, well, right? Like it, it in, in VR, we find that that is more important than just trying to push the narrative and push, you know, a certain gameplay or game mechanics is. It's really, it's, it's just a first person exploration more than it is a puzzle game. We really just want people to like come here. We've had people start this level and they just sit down on the floor, right? And we've made the game so that you can actually experience it from any level. You could, you could sit crisscross applesauce and, and play this game from start to finish. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah. you don't even need a standing or a sitting <laughs> mode. It is based all around the ability to have a child climb a child-sized person, or someone that's even eight foot tall. Everything is accessible. Wow. Wow, that's that's amazing. And this game just looks so immersive, and it's so beautiful, like, everything about it. Um, you know, and one of the one of the things that I find challenging in any sort of uh, space of game development is just taking ideas and being able to um, make it, you know, come to life. So um, can you shine a little bit about... Um, what were some of the challenges in taking these ideas um, that you and your team had and making it into a VR game? So, yeah, so that's a good question. Um, uh, so, like, sort of, like, some of the concepts uh, uh, for, like, the music and, like, the, the actual level design and stuff like that? Or, or mm -hmm. yeah, like, what in detail? Just Because there's so much I could talk for an hour. I'd love to be specific for you. Yeah, I mean, um, just... I guess with like the level design, 
um, because I mean, with a 3D game, um, there's just so much. It's a huge canvas, right? Um, that you can just fill it with whatever you want. So go ahead and just uh, talk a little bit about you know maybe the level design. Well, that this is a great example right here of level design where uh, le we we have it to that you come out of that first room. We mm -hmm. show you a bunch of interactive objects that you sort of can realize like hey. Uh, 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 you know, I like I can touch a mushroom head and it's a drum. I, you know, I can touch that bell plant and it sneezes at me. There are things in this world that are uh, able to be uh, um, interacted with. So we start you that in a sort of smaller room, and then we immediately bring you out into this vast space. It's fully like you can navigate this entire place, every inch of it. But mm -hmm. what we do is we 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 have a, a clear indication that uh, your sister Allegra. Is right over here and just in level design rights for vr we have to take into consideration the user could look anywhere right yeah we can, mm -hmm. we can walk the player as we do right into this spot and we can ask them uh you know not ask them but like we then can try and assume what they would do but ultimately you have to design levels for example here we made the valley of harmony this area just look absolutely mesmerizing right so it draws your attention to it and it just is something you will definitely look at over this wall right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's some things to see, and it's great when you're navigating. It, we make sure that when we want the view, uh, the player's view to be uh, um, uh, in a certain direction, that you just go above and beyond what it takes to bring that attention to this area. Uh, also the same with your sister who was sitting here, Allegra, talking. She's also, uh, through dialogue and through uh, uh, mocap, pointing and sharing and showing this area. So we've noticed that that's how we've sort of approached the best w best practices for VR is this, you have to go above and beyond to draw the attention of the user and, and expect them to maybe not even. So even if you never saw this um, and you just you just were staring this way the whole time, yeah. holy fuck, it doesn't break the game. We'll bring you back to, uh, to have another chance to see it. Or if you never see it, it doesn't matter. It progresses the game. Um, so that's one of the big each uh, uh, things we learned about this um, this whole game development thing for VR. Yeah. Uh, and, and you got to remember, we're a team coming from uh, um, we're a team coming from uh, a, a background of live entertainment, music. Video, yeah. That, like we we went and found incredible talent, and we brought them in. People have been working in games for for decades, but uh, as a core team we had to learn very quickly. And I think something that's really interesting is we brought our skill sets from other entertainment genres to gaming. And that's why I think our game has a different feel than most other games. It's, um, it's, it, it has a lot of that narrative slash cinematic quality, that uh, exploration and curiosity that we bring to uh, our other projects. And the game again looks just inc like just incredible um i love the aesthetic i love the inspiration you draw on from the natural world um can you walk us through the game now like so what's going on where where is the story taking us place uh taking place and where is it taking us um what's happening oh absolutely so uh, um uh the, the this game starts you off um i'll just go chronologically uh and mm -hmm. and, and first to give a big overview is that you and your sister Allegra right here are traveling through the Ionian uh, uh, forest to find the Harpa, which your teacher uh, had told you about, and you're aware that there is this encroaching army. And we only hint at this in the story. This is not a main focus. You never even actually see the Locrian army, except for a, a, a small flash of them in the in the tutorial slash backstory, which mm. I did not share just because it's uh, I think the, this is a little better for uh, for sharing. But right. uh, uh, ultimately, you you know with your sister that this this forest is in danger. And we try and build empathy through the game by having to use musical theory superpowers and musical theory puzzles uh, to help the creatures of the forest as you progress through the game, ultimately uh, building empathy for these creatures and then finding the epic of all creatures, the Harpa at the end, 
where you actually meet uh, not to give too much away, but you actually uh, just meet up with your with your professor, with your teacher, uh, Babatone, and he is also trying to help the Harpa. He's concerned that you are here, your children, you should not be walking through a, a jungle forest like this. This is crazy to, that you're even here. Um, <laughs> but they then find out that there's something special about you, Allegro, uh, that can help the, uh, help the Harpa. So that's the progression of the story. And really, the, the the larger point here is building empathy for wildlife, building empathy for creatures, and ultimately showing that even if they're a little scary or different, that you can uh, uh, you can coexist with them and you can even help them. Um, so that's really the, what wow. the game really brings you to do. Um, and by the way, we're in front of one of the first puzzles here. This is called the Sukumba. And uh, it's basically a giant marimba. And if you notice, we have these cool particle effects that oh, showcase yeah. wow. symbols. Yeah. And these symbols that you're seeing are uh, are all tied to the lore of the game, which every symbol represents a different land. As I mentioned earlier, the modes of music, the Ionian, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, Mixolydian, Aeolian, Locrian modes. And each land we plan to help introduce into future games. And this... This IP is going to be is much bigger than just this one game. It is it's already been music videos. It's going to be uh, animated series. It's going to be more VR games. It's, it, we're going to grow this to uh, as as large as we can because it's some it's our passion. It's our vision. It's our it's our baby. It's our avatar, if you will. It's our uh, it's our Lord of the Rings. That's exactly uh, what I was going to say. Like all of these fantastical worlds that you are drawing on, um, but then also expanding on in ways that the natural world doesn't really get expanded on in these other um you know like franchises so it looks incredible and it's a is a really uh, um a really just bold adventure mm -hmm. yeah i really love the uh the effects and how it how each of those symbols like you said just ties to the lore that's super creative and just i mean it's so colorful and honestly if i was uh playing on this instrument i'd be, I'd be banging all the notes <laughs> you know we've had jazz music like jazz musicians and other like uh, old Berkeley alumni friends come in and they're just, you know, like playing jazz chords. <laughs> we even made it where you can create harmonies. We also uh, added detail where uh, there's velocity hits, right? So um, performance is very, uh, uh, it's important to have like a, a good musician can play very softly and very hard at the right times. And oh, we yeah. created that same thing on this instrument where if I hit it lightly, right? I just get this sort of light sound, right? If I just smack it, a much, much different tone, a much different sound, it's much louder. And this is called timber. And the timber of all of our notes are uh, um, uh, uh, varied so that there is a level of, uh, of realistic performance quality to the instrument. Even though it's just like, it's a quick, like you could solve it in five seconds, right? But we yeah. wanted to make sure that we uh, made the player want to maybe play with it a little bit mm -hmm. right before they they solve the puzzle and not necessarily just force someone into a puzzle that's like I don't know what's going on here this is so silly I don't want to finish the game because I can't figure this out mm -hmm. it, we want people more to be in the game because they're having fun and they're just sort of casually enjoying and learning and what we're teaching you here is a one five one this is a basic interval of music like if you go to a music school this is probably what you're gonna learn on day one is uh here like a scale like a c major scale would be uh -huh. all the lower notes right and yeah then yeah the one five one of that scale would solve our puzzle and ultimately wow so we even tie in real music theory into our puzzles even though you would never need to know it all right that is so cool yeah it's an organic learning experience too like you said um, I'm pretty sure a ton of people would stay at that instrument, even though they know the answer to the puzzle. Because why not, you know? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Like, and I, I mean, I've had, you know, I've been sharing this game for, for over two and a half years now, or, or at least a, a good portion of the demo. And uh, by the way, the Brasaurus gives us a big old snot. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> And, and so a little, a little uh, homage to Jurassic Park, because I love that scene uh, uh, when the dinosaur sneezes all over everybody. Uh, <laughs> but in VR, too, I can't wait for you to try it, because in VR, that thing is so massive. It just, the scale feels really incredible. And, and as we, we basically took the scale you felt from the whale in the blue, the first VR experience we ever tried, and, and then just like doubled it, tripled it, if, if you will. Um, and and uh, am I near the mic? There we go. Yes. And I, as you can tell, I'm a talker. I can I can talk about this game all day. I apologize if there's 
if I'm missing any questions, please, please just. Uh, no, no, this, no, the, this no, experience this is, is awesome. it's this experience is necessary, and also just understanding the process, um, understanding where you're coming from with this game, what got you here, um, and also what you hope players take away from, because I feel like that's an overlooked part of the process, yeah. like what the developers hope gamers can take away from um, their game. What well, was VR always? Always the end goal? Like, was VR the most comfortable space you felt working in, your team working in? Or was it that, like, VR was best suited, or this was best suited for VR? Um, we So, our team is most certainly dedicated to VR from now on. I mean, we, we are now a, uh, um, we're an immersive entertainment studio. And what that encompasses for us is uh, VR games, which we are making, we've made Ionia. We're in the process of making several others as well. I can't wait to announce them and talk about them. They're super cool. And uh, we, we took everything we learned from this and then just doubled down on it. So uh, um, we're, we're all very excited to share our future VR games as well, which will be announced uh, within the next couple months. At least one of them will be. And, uh, and then two, we take the same skill sets we learn from making VR games and the team and the talent we have, and we also uh, approach virtual production as a company too. So we are in the process of using the Unreal Engine and VR to help films and help uh, um, traditional media uh, utilize this new medium, virtual production, where we're projecting our scenes onto some of the world's biggest uh, um, uh, 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 digital panels, right? So no more green screens. You actually can project the very similar to the Mandalorian, right? Where you're actually projecting the scene around the actors and and then having the actors act within a scene that they can see. And and no more just being rigged up with a bunch of cameras and you're in front of a green screen and you have to pretend that you're on a distant planet. You can now see that distant planet in real time. Uh, and so that's something else that our company is is working on and, and, and involved in. And funny enough, uh, making VR games and virtual production have almost identical uh, um, uh, talents that you need to, to, to accomplish both. So um, that's really where where we're headed and, and why we're going to continue to make VR games and continue to work in this medium. I mean, we've uh, I'm pretty sure we've got no doubt that whatever vr project follows this one will be an incredible one because look at where you are and you were talking about this is probably just your second project or the second you know um endeavor you've you've embarked on as a team and it looks gorgeous it plays gorgeous the story and, and the motive behind it are also um, equally beautiful um wh where can folks find out more about ionia and stay updated on the game and and follow you all online so the best place is to uh, uh, check out uh, rotu.com. That's where you can learn all about uh, not just Ionia, but the history of the company, um, as well as please check out our cinematic trailer, our gameplay trailer, our, our uh, uh, very successful release yesterday, which was our... Uh, 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 um, our release date trailer. So we have just announced that the game will be released September 23rd of this year. We're very excited, less than a month away. And uh, um, and and so our website, YouTube, and social media channels at, uh, at ROTUVR is, is where you can learn more. And one thing I just wanted to mention to everyone too, uh, uh, before I forget, is that by uh, by purchasing a copy of Ionia, you are directly supporting the wildlife warriors. We're probably the only, if not one of the very few VR games that has a public partnership with a nonprofit. Right. So we wanted to do wow. more than just, uh, uh, definitely wanted to do more than just build empathy for wildlife. We wanted to make sure that we actually are directly supporting wildlife. So every copy sold will help support not just Australian endangered species, but endangered species in North America, Africa, Europe, and, and all over the world. Jason, that, the work is, is inspirational. Um, it's beautiful. It's moving. Uh, I've got no oh, doubt yeah. gamers are going to appreciate this game. We're super excited for it. Um, and we're super excited for the work to come. Thanks so much for your time again, Jason. And we look forward to talking to you in the future because for sure, your next project, we're going to share that with our audience. Oh, yeah. This looks amazing. Well, it was a pleasure speaking with both of you.